To begin, I want you to see a photo of me playing Nine Bells when it was new in 1979 in Poland. The photo is very bad, but I chose it so that you could see how the technicians had arranged the lighting. Of course, the suspended bells move as I play, and it is lovely to watch the shadows moving when the light is like this. Nine Bells is one of my most important works for several reasons. It was the first time I invented an instrument. It was the first time I composed a piece uh, without writing it down. That was necessary since I couldn't play the bells and walk around and read a score at the same time. It was also the first time I made a long work with strict logical sequences. It was a piece I performed on my first tour in Europe in 1979, and that was a, essentially the beginning of my career in Europe. I did 10 concerts, I think, and uh, uh, got invited back to almost every place that I went. The bells were used alarm bells that I found in a shop on Canal Street in New York, and I had to just take the pictures that I found. One of the main problems as I was rehearsing and developing Nine Bells was to figure out where to put which bell. I kept hearing familiar melodies that I didn't like, and I had to keep changing the positions of the bells. Of course, these bells were completely untuned, but I found ways to adjust the pitches slightly in order to find a kind of music that sounded in tune to me. The piece continues regularly in the hands of other performers ever since I got too old to do it myself at the age of 50 something. And of course, every interpreter does it differently, usually with their own sets of bells. Today, the piece is in the repertoire of Adam Weissman in Berlin and Christoph Brunner in Zurich, Olaf Pires in Kassel, Aya Suzuki in The Hague, and Jennifer Torrance in Norway, and also Ed Golan in Massachusetts. It was also done in Japan by somebody else, and there are probably other interpretations that I don't know anything about. For some time there was no score because I was the only person who was doing the piece, and I could do it from memory. But after a while, I made a score so that others could learn the piece. I think the first one who did this was Matthias Kahl, a percussionist in Hamburg, who had a group called L'Ar pour L'Ar, which did lots of performances of contemporary music around that time. His solution was to buy handbells, as you can see in this photo. But the piece looked very different when it was played by Les Percussions de Trefort, an ensemble in Burgundy, that included handicapped players and where they played with a delicate collection of specially built ceramic bells that were surprisingly well tuned. Olaf Piras does it with huge steel plates and puts sand on the floor so that you can see the traces made by his feet as he walks. As the history accumulated, Javier Ruiz and I decided in 2008 to do a historical 30th anniversary edition of this piece, which had been premiered in Phil Niblock's loft in New York in uh, 1978. On the cover of this edition, you can see an overview of the nine bells and the basic geometry I followed in each of the nine movements. Three of the movements used only four bells, but most of them circulate around all nine bells. This is another overview showing the exact notes. Each of the nine movements begins and ends on its particular pitch, which is kind of a tonal center for that particular movement. As you can see, two corner bells are the same, A flat, and the front and center bells are both F an octave apart. So the nine bells only contain several different pitches. But it's time to listen to a bit of music. 
Let me play you first my own recording, done on a vinyl disc. I'll just play the beginning of the third movement, which is the most difficult, because the player has to turn around all the time. In this recording, the engineer put mics on the floor to pick up the sound of my bare feet, which is a nice addition to the music. Third down. The sound is completely different in other interpretations. Listen to the same passage played by the heavy steel plates of Adam Weissman, for example. The bells are so low and resonant that you can't hear the exact pitches very well, but the long ringing sounds are wonderful. Another very different interpretation was that of Simone Beneventi in Italy in uh, 2018. As you can see here, he too cut out steel bells in rectangular form, but much smaller. In this case, he worked with a dancer who somehow managed to dance around the bells without disturbing the musician. I must also mention a Norwegian interpreter, Jennifer Torrance, who has performed Nine Bells in Poland and Norway, but also in Iceland, where they said her concert was the best performance of the year. As you can see, she likes to do the piece with the audience on four sides, a formation that I always liked as well. Somehow, the sponsors obtained a permission to do this concert in the Sala Boromini, which is not only very impressive and historical, but also has a Boromini design on the floor that was exactly the right size for the nine bells to fit over it. A young composer named Luca Miti came to that concert, heard my music here for the first time, fell in love with it, and we have been friends ever since. An old friend from Yale, the composer Alvin Curran, was also there, and he wrote 40 years later, I helped to produce that concert in the Sala Boromini and your performance has stayed with me as a major event in my musical experience. He added recently that my performance seemed like an improvisation. But that was just because I was not reading a score. Nobody else in the experimental scene in New York was memorizing their music, so if there was no score, you assumed they were improvising. Our friend Frederick Krzyzewski also never memorizes, even though he's a virtuoso pianist. He observes that the idea of memorizing piano solos all started with Clara Schumann, who thought that if you took away the sheet music, it would seem like music was being created in real time. But I want to go back to the music and let you hear a recent version of Nine Bells as played by Aya Suzuki. She plays my original bells, which now belong to the conservatory in Amsterdam. 
She lives in The Hague and has been doing the piece quite a bit around Holland and also took it to Japan for several performances. So let's end with some excerpts of Nine Bells as played by this young woman. 